These speakers are absolutely going to change the industry. I caught up with SVS at CES and was just amazed at everything that they put into these speakers. So much so that I think other speaker companies are going to have to change the way that they're designing speakers. Don't just take my word for it. Let's listen to them right from the source. So we're just beyond excited to be here at CES showing off our new speakers. And it's actually an entirely new series. It's not just a single model. Uh, we're calling it our Ultra Evolution Series. This is the replacement for our flagship Ultra Series uh, and represents the culmination of pretty much everything we've learned about speaker engineering and acoustic technology over the past 12 years. So uh, what you're looking at, and I think what sort of grabs people's attention first and foremost, is the architecture of the cabinet. And essentially what this is, is an acoustically time-aligned driver configuration here on the front cabinet. And what, it, what that means is all of the drivers here are aligned on a single vertical plane. And what that allows us to do is essentially deliver the sound to your ear at the exact same instant across all of the sound field. And you know, from a, a listening perspective, that just means absolute truth when it comes to rendering of the signal, what the artist, what the director intended you to hear um, you know, with complete truthfulness. And uh, it also creates this sort of point source effect. So all of the signals are sort of coming out from the center area of where the tweeter is located and delivered directly to the listening area. And this allows us to create a very broad sweet spot, a great large listening area where all of the acoustics are very consistent and you're able to kind of get that accuracy uh, no matter where you're sitting within the room, uh, but also a sense of imaging that you're not able to recreate without this. So hearing spaces and sounds in different elements of space when you're listening in a stereo. Yeah, and we're talking about like hearing a guitar in a certain part of the stage where we're hearing something like drums going on somewhere else. And what we're talking about with the acoustically aligned, and for those of you who are not as well versed with this, what we're talking about is if we were to take these drivers out, these are six and a half inch woofers, these are four and a half inch mid-ranges and tweeters. And if we were to take these out and put them on a table, the six and a half inch woofer would sit higher than the four and a half inch mid-range and then the tweeter would be a little bit lower. And so all those have what we call an acoustical center. So by angling this baffle, what SVS has done is they have then taken those magnets and aligned their acoustic centers. So now they're got, all the music is coming out at the exact same time. The only other way to do this besides physical alignment is with DSP. Now I prefer physical alignment myself because of the fact that we can put it and use it with any gear. And when I say any gear, any, because you guys are powering these in the other room. You hear that, that's, that's them playing in the other room. We're competing with Godzilla and Kong and, and other uh, monsters over there. So uh, if you can hear that, uh, apologies. And what are you using to power these? So in our big theater setup, we have a 5.2.2 system. So essentially seven loudspeakers and two subwoofers. And we're using just an off the shelf Denon 4600 uh, AV receiver. And that is insane because uh, some of you guys might not realize this. So the room itself is not necessarily huge until you take into account that there's no ceiling. And so when there's no ceiling, that means you have to try to incorporate and fill up this entire area. And so it's incredibly loud, but it's very clear. Exactly, and that's one of the things that we want to be able to offer. And you know, when you talk about SVS speakers, we don't want you to have to choose between a speaker that's great for critical listening and hi-fi, which has that level of refinement, clarity, accuracy, transparency, neutrality, all the things that you listen for when you're, you know, say, assessing a, a piece of music. But then when you want to really step it up and have some fun with Godzilla or Mission Impossible, yeah, you don't get that big dynamic impact, the energy, the low frequency extension. So, you know, we're trying to create a line of speakers, both with these and everything that we do, uh, that is great in both <laughs> both types of content and really delivers on all fronts. So uh, that's sort of our MO for speaker design in general. And I think people will recognize that when they hear the new speakers. Now we've talked about this. So if we look at the front baffle, we see all these, but this is not the whole story because there's also some speakers on the back as well. That's correct. So you can see we have two woofers, six and a half inch woofers here on the front. And if you come around to the back of the speaker, you'll actually notice that on the corresponding side of the, uh, the back, part of the cabinet, we also have two woofers. So these are actually arranged in what we're calling a force balance array. And this is something we learned from developing our 3000 micro subwoofer. These are actually moving in and out in parallel. So you're getting effortless, just amazingly articulate and detailed bass, uh, but you're not getting any of the sort of vibrational energy or resonance that can basically create distortion within the cabinet. It's crystal clear. It's not 
creating any sort of artifacts that might affect the sound quality. Uh, and actually, like you were mentioning before, all of the drivers are in their separate sub enclosures. So it's essentially like having four different speakers within a single cabinet, uh, which just gives us great separation and just, uh, again, a nice, broad, accurate soundstage. And it's a true three-way. So these speakers, these subwoofers, or woofers, really. So these woofers are actually playing the same frequency on the front and the back at the same time. And because of that, it's reducing the cabinet vibrations that you would typically get. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise. It's canceling out that vibrational energy. And when you have a pair of these, you actually have eight woofers that are all firing in different directions within a room. And that, again, allows you to kind of smooth out some of those nodes. You get these, these highs and these peaks and these, uh, these low areas where sort of uh, there's a lack of bass uh, and this allows you again to attenuate for some of that just with the loudspeaker alone not that i'm going to tell you not to buy a subwoofer <laughs> but these things are great for low frequency no but you know what it's nice to be able to have extenuating speakers that will be able to play the same frequencies to be able to help out with the subwoofer you don't want absolutely. necessarily a subwoofer to have to do all the work absolutely now these are considered full range then full range no doubt and you have three of these coming out three different yep. ones so we have three different towers we have uh, in our big home theater room what's called our Ultra Evolution Pinnacle. That will be the flagship model, the, the cream of the crop of what SVS is offering. Then we'll have our Ultra Evolution Titan. This will be right in the middle of the lineup uh, as far as the tower goes. And then we'll have our Ultra Evolution Tower, which will come out a little bit after we launch these first two. Um, and then price points will be 5,000, 4,000, 3,000 for the pair uh, for each one of those models. Um, now there is a, a bit of a tweeter story as well that we could jump into yeah, whether we want to go on this one yeah, let's, a closer let's go take a look at the we can get a closer look on the center so let's do that so as i was mentioning it's going to be a full-on speaker series refresh so in addition to the three towers we're going to have a dedicated three-way center channel speaker and this will give you a good opportunity to show off the tweeter uh, what we're showing here uh, and what we've done is taken what we had, which was our aluminum dome tweeter from the Ultra Series, and used something called vapor deposition. So you can see it here. That's our original tweeter design. Um, and basically what we've done is used a diamond coating on that aluminum dome tweeter to raise the breakup frequency to well over the levels of human audibility. We're talking like 50,000 hertz, which is pretty much only what dogs can hear. That's incredible. Now, why would we do that? Not because we want to sell speakers to dogs, <laughs> but because we want to have just a level of performance, you know, whether you're hearing the crash of a cymbal or the screeching of a car tire or something, you know, that really has to sparkle as far as those high frequency goes. We want to do it effortlessly with airiness and a sort of unveiled nature that lets you not have any sort of fatiguing or, or grating sound that I think sometimes people can associate with tweeters. And we talked about this a little before. It also helps reduce the distortion at those higher levels. Now, unfortunately, with a lot of people that are doing like DIY work and stuff, you're using microphones that can only measure up to 20 kilohertz. And when they do that, you can only measure distortion up to 10 kilohertz. The way that you're doing it now, you guys get lower distortion from the 10 to 20 kilohertz range as well which makes for a much better listening experience in the long run. Absolutely. And it also allows us to blend the highs a little bit more seamlessly with the mid-range, too, with this new uh, diamond-coated uh, application that we've applied as well. So it pretty much has an effect throughout the high frequencies from the very top to, uh, to where they just start to cross over into the mids. Now, one of the things that I really found impressive, and I want you to talk a little bit about this because you're really good at explaining it, is that you actually use glass fiber cones on your mid-range and your woofers. And I've always, whenever I've heard anything with glass fiber or used them myself, I've always been very impressed with the sound. And honestly, one of my favorite materials ever to use on a woofer. And you guys didn't use this by accident, did you? No, this is, a, this is something we carried over from the original Ultra Series because it was so capable. Uh, when it comes to the glass fiber, it's about stiffness to mass ratio. And what I'm talking about with that is your keeping the ability to have refinement and create accuracy and, and really have a, a very perfectly tuned sound, but also move enough air to have that big dynamic impact and also have a sense of, uh, of energy from coming from the speaker. So, you know, it's walking that fine line between, you know, having the refinement and having the excitement and the energy. And, you know, material science is something that I think, um, you know, people geek out on with speakers a lot, especially in the DIY side. It's sure. like, you know, well, what am I getting from a ribbon versus beryllium versus aluminum dome? And so it's something that creates conversation. But we found this glass fiber execution to be the best of both worlds when it comes to that. 
And I think it, we mentioned before, better transient response as well. Exactly. It's got that ability to start and stop on a dime and not have that sort of sense of uh, bloated or any sort of overhang of notes that sort of get muddied together. It's very clean in terms of rendering those different notes in, in the transitional sequences. And so for those of you who know, what we're talking about is waterfall graphs, right? When we're talking about being able to start and stop real quickly, making sure that note doesn't linger. When we hear music that we start hearing muddiness, right? That's coming from a lot of those notes continuing to play when they shouldn't be. They should be stopping. And you're saying the reason why you chose these is so that you don't get that. Exactly. And it's the same reason we made the, the changes to the tweeter as well. We wanted to have a little bit better effortlessness and again the transient response of that, especially in the highs. You want to be able to hear an instrument, the pluck of a guitar string or the, the you know, a cymbal being played or even like a triangle, have that sort of accuracy that really makes you feel like you're hearing it. And even something like this tweeter diffuser that we have, uh, you know, the primary uh, you know, purpose of this is to protect the tweeter from any kind of damage, you know, kids or whatever poking it. Uh, but we've actually went through 25 different prototypes of different types of diffusers and, and ended up with this organic cell lattice structure. So you can see it's kind of a semi irregular pattern. Uh, and what we found is that with this structure, it allows us to create just much better diffraction qualities and a much more dispersed sound field. So we're getting a larger sweet spot. As far as the high goes, it blends really nicely with the mids, and it has a, a lot of acoustic benefits that even surpass what we had with our original tweeter, which has a more uniformed uh, grill cover to it. So, uh, you know, again, it was one of those things where we didn't want to leave any stone unturned. You know, the magnetic grills, the tweeter diffuser, the uh, material to make the tweeter, the opposing woofers, you know, all of these are part of the technology story that we're trying to tell with evolution. And one of the other things that we didn't comment that I really appreciate is the truncated frames. So we've got a couple truncated frames here with the mid-range and the tweeter. This allows us to have the tweeter closer to the mid-range for the crossover frequency so that we don't have to worry about off-axis issues there. And then on top of that, with the truncated frame on the top and bottom, I appreciate it because it makes you have the cabinet not have to be as tall, which makes it easier to fit underneath the screen. Absolutely. I mean, the alternative of having a two-way center channel speaker, which is essentially the tweeter flanked by some mid-bass drivers, it does give you a narrower cabinet. It can be easier to place under a TV because of that. But again, you're losing out on that sweet spot. You mentioned off-axis response. You know, sounds great when you're right in front of it. As soon as you step off, some of the dialogue, some of the elements that you really listen for, especially in a home theater, start to fall off. So we'll never make anything but a three-way center channel for those reasons. Exactly. And someone had actually commented that center channels only supposed to be heard right in the center. I don't agree with that, do you? <laughs> I mean, they're <laughs> so critical to just the transitional, the panning effects, and I actually think a lot of people overrate the front left and right when you're talking about a home theater experience, you know, because at any given time, 70 to 80% of the dialogue, the front stage action is coming from the center channel. So if you're ever looking to skimp somewhere in your home theater, don't, don't let it be it. your center channel. You know, find another place to save your money. And this allows you, the three-way, just so you guys understand, it allows you to be able to listen to your speaker pretty much anywhere in your room and give you the same experience as if you were right in front of it. And that's extremely important, not just with someone sitting on the left and right, but also with your room reflections, which end up being another big issue with these. Really big fan of this. But this isn't the only thing you guys brought. You also brought something that I was unaware of that you did. Yeah, well, we'll finish out the line. We have our smaller bookshelf here. We have the larger bookshelves in there. And uh, one of the other models, which uh, you might get some pictures of, is our, our ultra elevation. Um, we showed you our prime elevation here. Uh, but essentially, this was probably the most demanded speaker that we had. Uh, it, it allows you to create uh, Dolby Atmos height effects or uh, basically object-based surround sound by having a speaker that can mount directly on the sidewall or directly to the ceiling. It's got a unique bracket system, which essentially just screws into a stud, and then you essentially hang the speaker either on the sidewall or on the ceiling, and it provides direct radiating height effects, not the sort of bounce effect. Mm -hmm. and, uh, because you have the angled front baffle, it's giving you a nice direct sound to, uh, to the listening area without having to use one of those pivoting brackets or something that can be a little bit more challenging. And, and not only that, you know that once you have it mounted, it's going to be mounted perfectly at the right angle for you, assuming you mount it in the right spot. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, so the Ultra version just gives you a little bit more dynamic impact, a little lower frequency expansion, extension, uh, you know, wider frequency range. So, you know, a lot of people with large rooms or high ceilings were like, oh, I just need a little beefier elevation. Well, it's coming, I promise. <laughs> and then um, did you want to talk a little bit more about the, the Nano? Yeah, so the Ultra LV, uh, uh, Evolution Nano will be coming out a little bit after our, uh, our other uh, tower speakers. And this will also come um, with our uh, smallest Ultra Tower speaker. But essentially, we're doing the same sort of 
uh, acoustically centered time alignment and doing it just a smaller form factor here. So, you know, these can be used as rear surrounds or side surrounds, but they're going to be phenomenal in small to medium sized rooms in a stereo setup or setting up, uh, you know, five of these as part of a, a multi-channel system as well. So, you know, again, bringing all the technology that we did to our flagship towers back to smaller form factors that are a little more affordable. And the great thing about these two, all of this line has your first ever magnetic grills on them, which, I know. I, you know, a lot of people don't realize this. So I don't have to really align it. It just uses the magnets to align it. You just get it close and it'll align yeah. right on the And when you're talking about speakers, you're talking about an entire ecosystem. And, right. you know, we had the pin cup retention system, you know, which works phenomenally. They never, you know, fall off or anything like that. But, you know, for people who are want a high-end look and feel, um, this just provides a little bit more uh, clean look on the front of it. Uh, and I think they're absolutely gorgeous. So uh, this was, again, another big thing where people are like, ah, if they just had magnetic grills, well, we listen. SBS listens, and, uh, and this is the end result. And it probably wouldn't make much of a difference at all as far as measurability or audibility, but without having those uh, pin cushions, like you said, on there, it actually does give you a nice flat baffle, so a little bit less area for it to diffract off of. Absolutely. All right, and then you have this line, which I am actually new. I did not realize that you guys were doing this. This is actually really neat. So cables, I mean, this is sort of the great audiophile debate. How much do they matter? How much should I spend? Do you get your money's worth when you, you spend more? And you know what? I think there is some diminishing returns when it comes to cables and connectors and things like that. But you know what we're trying to do with accessories is the same thing we've done with subwoofers and loudspeakers, which is bring a level of performance, a, a premium look and feel uh, that's at a pri price point that's a little more inclusive and, and doesn't provo provide that sort of sticker shocker like that's got to be snake oil. So, you know, everything we're doing here has really advanced shielding. You know, that is the one curse of, of your cabling is, is it going to let in any kind of interference, whether it's EMI or RFI, whatever it is. Um, so all of our cables are very much uh, designed to reject any kind of interference. Um, you know, so whether it's speaker cables, subwoofer cables, we have HDMI. Uh, we also have um, optical and, and XLRs. Um, but then we also make solutions to help you solve some common home theater problems. You'll see our subwoofer isolation system here. These are essentially little feet. Ooh, yeah, we got a little vibration from the subs there. Um, that you put on the bottom of your subwoofer and they can work with any model, not just SVS. And essentially they decouple your sub from the floor. So if you're noting, noticing uh, your windows rattling or maybe there's some, uh, you know, knickknacks falling off the shelves or even if neighbors are complaining you live in a townhouse or even uh, you have one of our bigger subs and your next door neighbor is complaining these basically decouple the subs so more of that low frequency energy is going into the air into the room and not into the floors and walls where you're actually hearing it you know and distracting vibrations and, and things like that and then also our wireless audio adapter it's a full range adapter so certainly you can use to reduce cable clutter with your sub but you could also use it with a pair of powered speakers if you had those as well to get a, a wireless signal to them and uh, again, this is just for decreasing cable clutter, uh, but we'll constantly be looking for new solutions to, uh, to bring uh, you know, a little bit more ease of use to some of the people who are passionate about the hobby and, uh, and things like that. And one of the things that I found interesting about these cables is they really do feel like a rope. I mean, it, it's, there's no flex in them as far as any space that's not being used in there. That is all full. And that, it actually has a really premium feel to it. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, threaded sort of outer layer here, while it doesn't provide, you know, uh, protection from interference, it gives you better grippability with your forever snaking wires behind a TV. It's something that you can appreciate, but also it helps reduce wear and tear for the actual parts of the cable that are shielding from interference. So, you know, it looks nice, certainly. If you're gonna have cable clutter, might as well have it look decent. Um, but these are, you know, certainly high performance. Uh, we make our own terminations as well. So, um, you know, these have been the fastest growing part of our business here for about a year, because I think, you know, word is getting out that we can deliver that sort of premium experience. So what I do like about these two is right here at the end of the connector, if you take a look at this, I don't know how many of these cables that I've found that these are still conductive. And so when you're going to put together gear, you touch these together and they short out. No, it's absolutely not. And you know, again, it's these little things where, you know, we spend a lot of time in our engineering process to find out what are important to the end users, what's gonna help them reduce any sort of issues as far as performance or um, things that might take away from the experience. So, you know, while we won't launch 12 products in a year, when we do, they're going to be very methodical. We're going to think hard about them. They're going to have some true innovations. And then I think that's what you're seeing with the Evolution Series and with all of our accessories here. All right, guys, this is everything that I want to talk about with SVS. If you guys haven't checked them out, make sure to check them out. Thanks again, Nick, for your time. I really appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thanks for tuning in.